All right, folks, so it's time for yet again another round of course software updates. And this time around, they're overhauling the data fields and data pages for easy readability on their watches. There's a new virtual pacer feature for running. They're also announcing new cycling features. And there's a new screen mirroring feature, which displays the data that's being collected on your watch on your paired smartphone. However, there's a lot more to that screen mirroring feature, which makes it kind of interesting and probably the most intriguing feature on this new update. So with all these updates, these will be coming to their public beta program for the Pace 3, the Apex 2, the Apex 2 Pro, as well as the Vertex 2 on April 24th with a full release plan for around May 10th if all goes well with the beta. And then for the Pace 2, the Apex Pro, and the original Vertex 1, that's a few weeks later at May 16th for the public beta and a planned May 30th rollout. Okay, so first up, let's talk about their new virtual pacer feature, which is available on the run and track run profiles. And at the moment, it's just a basic pacing feature for either specific distance or just maintaining a certain pace where it'll alert you if you're going above your pace, below your pace, or maintaining your pace. So right now it's basically one constant pace to maintain, which we all know doesn't usually happen during a run. So it's not gonna be as advanced as being able to create a pacing strategy where you could build a workout or race strategy with something like negative splits. But they did mention that this is just kind of getting the groundwork in place for a pacing feature. So I could see a lot more customization with a pacing strategy being built out in the future. And then next up, they've also redesigned the look and feel when it comes to the data pages and data fields where it's now easier to see your data at a glance. So they've been able to increase the text size of the actual data by hiding the data field label when you're not interacting with the watch. So what happens here is that after around five seconds of not interacting with the watch, the label disappears for the data field and it's replaced with an icon like a heart rate icon here, calories burned, and the time of day over here. And you also notice that they also removed most of the lines that separated the data fields. And then if you start to interact with the watch again, whether that's pressing the light button or scrolling to a different data page, the data field label then appears for about five seconds and then goes away and then it's replaced with the icon. And this is how it looks with eight data fields and it's definitely a lot easier to see the actual metric with those larger fonts for sure. And I also do like the color coded icons and I've actually always had a hard time viewing data at a glance on chorus watches and I think this is a big improvement with readability. Now, one thing I'm not so sure of though are how the labels look when the screen is active, where I don't necessarily think those are actually easier to read with some of the colors, where some of the colors don't have that much contrast. So I do definitely like the larger and more bold fonts overall, and that makes a huge difference. But for me, I'd still prefer a bit more contrast with the labels when they do appear. Okay, so those are some nice updates and all, but now let's talk about what I think is probably the coolest new thing to come with this new update. So they now have a screen mirroring feature where you can display the data that's being collected on your watch on your paired smartphone. Now, Coros isn't the first company to come out with this sort of feature, of course. So Apple introduced this a bit ago with their live activity view feature with their Apple Watch. And I think it's also good to mention that Garmin Garmin has had the screen mirroring with their edge by computers with their extended display feature, which is kind of similar. So this concept of mirroring data that's collected on a watch isn't necessarily something new. However, Course is extending this idea a bit more. So first off, this isn't just for cycling. This is for any workout type. And there's also some additional functionality where I don't think screen mirroring is actually an accurate name for this feature. It's more than just showing the data that's being collected on your watch. And there's also a lot of possibilities that could be probably built out with this feature in the future. Feature in the future, I actually got that right first time. Okay, so for how this works, when you're recording an activity on your Chorus watch, if you open up the Chorus app on your phone, there's a little icon in the upper left-hand corner indicating that you're currently in a session with this little active icon. So if we're recording an indoor activity, if we tap on this icon, here's where you can see your data that your watch is collecting, and you can have up to 10 data fields on this page. Now, this layout that you see on your phone is completely independent of the data layout that you have on your watch, which I personally like. So you can actually have two completely different views on your phone versus your watch. For indoors, this can be useful for lots of different kinds of workouts. So the first one that may come to mind is indoor cycling, so you don't have to turn your wrist. You can have tons more data being displayed, and it's just way bigger, just like a bike computer. But there's lots of other use cases for this too, like if you're rowing or on a ski erg machine, it's super challenging to see your data while not interrupting your session. If you're on a treadmill, you can see stuff like your cadence and training load. If you're doing high intensity interval workouts, again, your hands are probably gonna be occupied where you could just have kind of your phone on the ground so you can see your data. And then another example, Chorus gave is if you're doing hangboard workouts where it's going to be pretty challenging to see your watch from that angle. So there's actually lots of different use cases for this feature. So I'm glad they didn't implement it just for cycling. And it's also pretty responsive in terms of the icon in the app becoming active when you open the app. And the data is from what I can tell basically in real time. Oh, and then one more thing is that if you do press the lap key on your watch, you'll even get a lap notification in the app. 
And then for stuff like weight training, you'll also be able to see your rep count. And since the lap key works a little bit different here, where it advances to the next rest period or set, those appear in the app as well. So that's definitely cool and all, but now let's talk about outdoor activities. And this is where it kind of gets interesting. So when you start an outdoor workout, it's actually a different kind of display that you see in the app. Instead of being a full data page, it shows a map with a few data fields at the bottom of the page. So what it's doing here is using the location data from your watch to pinpoint you on the map in the Chorus app. And the reason this is kind of cool is that maps on watches are great and all for sure, but they're gonna be more useful for navigation in your general vicinity, like figuring out like which fork in the trail to choose. But if you're more to pickle and need to figure out like how to get to a location like 10 miles away, that becomes a lot more challenging on a watch. And that's where just being able to open up the Chorus app and see your location along with a full blown map comes in super handy. To take this one step further though, now let's talk about routes and this is where it starts to get kind of cool. So when you load in a route on your watch, the intended route will show up in the app. And again, this just makes it super useful from a navigation standpoint, being just much easier than using the maps on your watch. And one more thing to mention too, is that maps on a Chorus watch don't have labels or anything like that since they're just map images. The maps in the app are full blown maps with all the details. And to take this even one step further, we should also talk about offline maps and how those work. So your Chorus watch will have whatever maps that you chose to install on the device, so those will be offline. But how about your phone? And for my initial testing, it does cache the surrounding area where you last had cell service or Wi-Fi, but at the moment, Chorus is actually saying that they only recommend using the map feature during an outdoor activity if you have cell service. But I think that's gonna be something that they consider as this feature is gonna be built out because that does extend the functionality of this feature to be super handy when you're out of cell phone range. And then you can also use this in conjunction with their explore mapping tool in the app where you can just go ahead and pop over to the explore tab, create a new route on the fly, sync it with your watch, and then that new route displays on the map on the screen mirroring view. So as an additional navigation tool, I think this is a pretty cool feature. Again, I love the maps my watches, don't get me wrong, but if I need more detail, if I need more of a bird's eye view, or if I need to just get myself out of pickle and figure out where the heck I am, I'm probably gonna try to whip out my phone, which not only provides more detail, but it's just much faster than using maps on a watch. Now, being that this is just being rolled out as a beta feature, there's a few things that aren't there at this point. Like you can't edit these data fields at the moment, but that's definitely on their radar. And then a couple other things I noticed, which I'm not sure if these are planned or not, is that it would be cool to have maybe a second data page for outdoor workouts where you could have the same display as indoor workouts with lots of data fields. And they also don't have lap prompts for outdoor activities. And then a couple other things. So for indoor workouts, the available data fields that you can choose from are predetermined based on your activity type. So for instance, here's the available data fields for an indoor ride, but as you can imagine, there's many more data fields to choose from which you may wanna display. And then same thing goes for like the gym cardio profile. It has the most common data fields that you likely want, but doesn't have all of them. But Chorus did mention here that there's likely a lot more customization features that could be added in the future. And then here's one more little bonus. So if for some reason you're recording on more than one Chorus device at one time, hey, who knows? They actually give you a choice of which device to mirror to the phone. Either way though, I think this is a pretty cool feature where they're certainly extending the screen mirroring concept a bit. I think there's a lot of possibilities for this in the future. Okay, so moving on to some other things they have going on with this update. So there's also some optimizations when it comes to GPS performance, specifically for climbing. So they're now employing a new algorithm specifically for their outdoor climb profile that's designed to essentially weed out bad data when you're on a wall. So the way they kind of explained it is that when you're on a wall, you're not really moving horizontally much if at all, since for the most part, you're trying to go up unless you're traversing. But the thing is the satellite chipset is still pinging for location data that entire time. So what can happen since you're on a vertical wall where it's a challenging situation to get a clear satellite signal is that you could encounter bad location data since satellite signals could be bouncing off of the wall or you just may not be getting a clear view of the sky. So like one ping over here, one over there, and then another over here, and then all of that can kind of just add up to weird looking GPS tracks, as well as additional distance that you didn't actually cover. Basically their new algorithm is supposed to weed out all those bad pings to get you a more accurate track. And this is specifically for the outdoor climb profile and more specifically just for the climb phase. It's not implemented for approaches or descents. And the reason for this is that the algorithm is specifically designed for slow or no horizontal speed. And you can see these sort of anomalies happen right now with just a normal outdoor activity where with nearly all GPS devices, when you're just standing still, your device still will be pinging for location data. And being that consumer devices are only accurate down to a few meters or so, that could mean again, like a ping over here, a ping over there, and then another ping over here. And then all that can kind of add up and kind of look like a weird spider web of GPS tracks. 
So that's why this algorithm is just employed for their climbing phase of their outdoor climb profile, where this sort of algorithm really isn't needed or as useful for situations where you're actually traveling with some amount of horizontal speed like the approach or descent. Now, I haven't had a chance to personally test this feature quite yet, so at the moment, we're just gonna have to kind of take their word for it, but hopefully I'll test that in the future. And then for some other features with this update, they've apparently improved the recovery time algorithm. So these are supposed to be a bit more accurate in regards to the proper amount of time for recovery that you need to perform optimally for your next workout. And I don't have enough data on this quite yet to say if it's more accurate, but I'll have a video on this likely very soon where I'll be covering it. And then for running and trail running, you'll now be able to use navigation on your watch while doing a planned workout. And then in addition, they've also added a basic interval mode for treadmill runs. And then for a few more features for climbers, you can now build workouts directly in the Chorus app or the Chorus training hub, which you could send to your watch. They've also added climbing training plans, which can be added to other training plans. And they've also added additional bouldering grades for their watches that have the bouldering sport profile. They're also now feeding in more specific workout notes to Strava using the Strava Notes Sync feature. So now indoor and outdoor bike rides will sync over training load and their specific notes for their running form test as well as their running fitness test, which will go over to Strava. Now, something that isn't available on this update, but is something that they at least wanted to announce are new cycling fitness insights that'll be coming sometime in May. So course has been more focused on the running side of things with all the features that they have for runners, like their running fitness tests and stuff like that. But us cyclists haven't really gotten a whole lot, but that's supposed to change in another release sometime in May where they'll have more cycling focused fitness and performance features like an FTP test, as well as power related data feeding into your training load when you use a power meter. So as a cyclist, I'm certainly excited to hear about those new features. I'm not as excited to have to do an FTP test in about a month or so, but I guess stay tuned for that suffering. So again, when it comes to the rollout schedule for this update, so you'll be able to sign up for the public beta starting on April 24th if you have a Pace 3, an Apex 2, an Apex 2 Pro, or a Vertex 2 with a full public release planned for around May 10th. Then if you own a Pace 2, Apex Pro, or original Vertex, you can sign up for the public beta May 16th with a full rollout plan for around May 30th. Anyhow, that's everything new Chorus has in the works with this new software update, but I'd probably suggest subscribing to the channel and turning on that little notification bell if you haven't already, because things are definitely starting to heat up. Anyhow, if you found the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button. And in the meantime, happy running, happy riding, and we will see you in the next video.